The Palestinian resistance group Hamas has condemned the killing of five Palestinian journalists in the recent Israeli airstrikes across the besieged Gaza Strip. The Israeli warplanes targeted a house in the Al Nusayrat camp in central Gaza, killing three journalists. Within less than 12 hours, another house was also targeted in Gaza City, which killed two more journalists. These two attacks bring the total number of Palestinian journalists who have been killed since the start of the war to 158. In a statement, Hamas said the occupation is trying to hide the atrocities it has committed and does so with no regard for the consequences of violating international laws. The group has called on the international community and humanitarian organizations to impose urgent measures and hold the occupation leaders accountable for committing such crimes. Now to talk more on this, we are joined by Mr. Tony Gosling, historian and investigative journalist from Bristol. Mr. Gosling, welcome to Press TV. It's been a while. I haven't seen you for a while now. Uh, Mr. Gosling, I think the most important question here to ask is, are these killings of the journalists intentional? Like looking at the numbers, 158 journalists uh, killed in nine months is quite alarming. And if it's deliberate, why? Well, look, we've got to be careful about these figures because there are various disputes about the number of journalists killed. I don't want to trivialise it, but you, you, the, the, the Committee to Protect Journalists, which is an international committee, uh, has a figure of 108, 108 so far by uh, the 5th of July 2024 uh, in Gaza over the last eight months or so. so uh, but what, what they do is they say it's extremely difficult to corroborate now. So what they're saying is, uh, as the genocide continues, it's becoming more and more difficult to get accurate figures. Uh, so uh, they're, what they're, well, they're, they're not saying um, that this is not the correct figure, the 158 is not the correct figure. What they're saying is it's becoming impossible to be sure about what is going on. Uh, and that's because they're, they're relying on uh, sources who are generally away from Gaza. They don't have their own people in Gaza. Anyway, even if they are in Gaza, uh, there is, is it almost impossible to get verification about because you can't, you can't travel around. Uh, and this is, let me just tell you, first of all, you're right. They are most definitely deliberately targeting journalists, just as NATO and the Ukrainians are uh, in the Ukraine war. Uh, targeting Russian journalists. We are seeing deliberate drone attacks specifically on camera crews and journalists over there too. Uh, two more dead in the last week or so. Uh, so this is definitely going on. Uh, it, it's just it's very difficult to document and that's part of the reason why you've got this siege. Uh, the starvation, the mass bombing using these massive uh, uh, area denial bombs provided by the United States for demolishing uh, factories just being dropped on housing estates in Gaza is to make it really, really difficult for the international community to know what's going on. And that's part of the reason that we've seen this unprecedented astronomical number of uh, uh, 158, I believe that's probably a true figure actually, uh, of journalists specifically targeted and killed. So these are the eyes and the ears of the world being deliberately shot in the head by these uh, Israeli bombers and um, by the Israeli Defence Forces. And they are fighting a psychological war, a media war. Uh, and these are the um, basically the casualties. Um, the, well, they might call them collateral damage, but they're not. They're deliberately targeted. They would much rather kill a journalist, even than a fighter, probably, because they don't want the world to know what's going on in Gaza. This is part of their tactics, because they also have an immense influence in the Western press, there is a strong Zionist bias. Uh, for example, the, the press here in London, uh, the mass media, simply doesn't look into the, uh, the, the, the Zionist lobby, the way that the Zionist lobby bribes politicians, removes politicians here in Britain uh, through, through the Labour Friends of Israel, Conservative Friends of Israel, etc. So they don't look into that. And it, it actually was left up to Al Jazeera to do a three-part investigative documentary called The Lobby into that and so that yeah so as you can see the psychological warfare part of this the use of corporate tv what i call private equity television that is to say uh, companies that are owned uh, uh, their shares are owned by these massive 
uh, international financial hedge funds and, and private equity firms like BlackRock and Vanguard. These are the people who are now part of the war in Gaza. That is to say, shutting the eyes of the Western population to the genocide that's been going on there. And so that's why I think it's so appalling to see this. It's really a battle, I think, in Gaza between good and evil, between right and wrong, because you see on one side uh, a defensive strategy, trying to limit the damage, making sure that it doesn't escalate, which is a responsible, humane thing to do. On the other side, you see a desperate, dying uh, nation, that is the politicians like Netanyahu, trying to cling on to power and realising that actually more death, more destruction, more war, more genocide is the only way he can stay in office. That's right, Mr Gosling. Why isn't the regime being held accountable for uh, these crimes? We had instances of journalists being shot dead by Israeli snipers uh, while wearing clearly visible uh, press vests and helmets as well. Uh, there are videos to prove it. Um, one example would be Shirin Abu Akhla back in 2022. Well, look, the reason that they're not being held accountable uh, is because the uh, Western press is pro-Israeli uh, and they don't like what we used to call in our newsroom in London when I worked there back in the early 1990s, the wrong story. You've got a great story, but it's just the wrong story. People don't want to hear it in the higher up round here. Uh, and so if you start doing reports like this, you might find yourself out of a job. Uh, this is, I'm afraid, the advertising propagandistic side uh, uh, of journalism that you get in any busy newsroom, particularly here in the West. Journalists to survive in their careers uh, have got to have almost antennae on their head, uh, watching out for what stories the uh, management and the editors want them to find and which ones they don't want them to find. And then, for example, when I'm publishing information about murdered journalists, deliberately targeted journalists in the Ukraine war, on the British National Union of Journalists Facebook page, I find those disappearing. Now, I'm not blaming the Journalists Union for that, but they're putting them on Facebook, which is one of these uh, mass media, uh, new, me you know, new media uh, tech giant companies, which is wedded to the US war machine in many ways. Uh, and so uh, the, the, the fact is, even the journalists in this country, I believe, through the, um, the use of big tech, uh, and, and particularly the Zuckerberg platforms here uh, are being denied even the ability to see what's going on with Russian journalists. I mean, I think journalists all should stick together right across the world. And if we had uh, a, a good liaisons between journalists in many parts of the world, as uh, good old Julian Assange kept pointing out, by making sure the public get the truth, these wars can be stopped, these wars can be halted because they can only survive. Uh, if the mainstream press is complicit and our job as journalists uh, should be to stop that. The only problem is, and I'm feeling this quite strongly here in Bristol myself, having been cancelled again last week, uh, is the only way we can actually do this is by really sticking together because us journalists generally do not own, I mean, I'm a freelance journalist, but I don't own a printing press. I don't own a transmitter uh, for television or radio. And so that's why... Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's become very very uh, difficult to get the truth out because those that do own the printing presses in London, do own the, the transmitters around the country, uh, are, are not playing fair with with this, uh, and, and there's an enormous amount of psychological effort and psychological warfare effort put in as part of these on the ground fighting war campaigns, both obviously both in um, in Ukraine and in Gaza. Uh, the the, uh, the TV companies are a major weapon in those wars. There you have it. As always, Mr. Tony Gosling, historian and investigative journalist from Bristol, UK. Mr. Gosling, it was nice talking to you again, sir.